Nabiki Tendo. You can call her a shrewd businesswoman. You could call her an entrepreneur. But if you ask the hundreds who have been burned in her wake, you'll find they refer to her by a different name. Gold Digger. Hmm. Gold Digger. Should I? Mm, nah, it's too obvious. Webster's Dictionary of Slang refers to a gold digger as a person who uses charm to extract money or gifts from others. In the Ranma One Half universe, no character fits this description more than Nabiki Tendo. She is a devious little money grubber, taking every gullible sap for all he's worth, and nobody is immune, not even her own flesh and blood. But believe it or not, Nabiki is not the only gold digger in the Ranma One Half macrocosm. There is a plethora of characters who have slipped through the cracks and gone unnoticed, seemingly innocent and inconsequential, but swindling their way across the land and causing pain and misery wherever they may roam. Be they lurking behind a facade, deep in the background, or off the small screen altogether, these world-class four-flushers could give Miss Nabiki a run for her money. In the inviolable hallways of Farinkin High, you will find the most upstanding prospects. This small cluster of students exemplify the school's learned elite. Their names are Yuka, Sayori, Asami, and Hiroko. They answer to a ringleader of sorts, the buoyant, fetching young maiden, Akane Tendo, of f f f f f f f f this caucus of five is the epitome of how young students should act. They are gregarious and full of vim and vigor. They are deeply involved in extracurricular activities and school sporting events. They are high-spirited and they love to gossip. A serendipitous onlooker might mistake these four. Yuka, Sayori, Asami, and Hiroko as the underlings of Akane Tendo. After all, this quartet has depended wholly on Akane Tendo to absolve they from calamity. And whilst their personalities are more of a collective and henceforth fade into one another, Akane is the bell of the ball, a rapturous young upstart who unintentionally drowns them in her shadow. Oh, but humble not these fair waifs as mere gutter trash or background figurines, for they share an incomparable bond to Miss Akane. Theirs is a friendship by exact definition of the word. They depend on one another. They support one another. In and out of school, during the most jubilant times, or during times of pure rubbish. They always are there for one another. Their friendship is an adamantine bond, and all the pupils of Farinkin High can learn a lion's share from this fine quartet. Sorry to burst your bubble, but this isn't a perfect world we live in, and Farinkin High has its share of bad seeds. Let me introduce you to Nabiki Tendo's little conglomerate. Let's not! Oh, such disreputable mountebanks! Shut up! Oh. To find <laughs> the two head members of Nabiki's posse were never formally given names in the Ranma One Half canon, but a little birdie named Jara told me that on the net they have come to be known as Kikuko and Ryonami. These two are more like employees or subordinates than true blue friends. Every student walking the halls of Farinkan High is a potential dollar sign, and for Nabiki to collect, she'll need to set up a system, a business relationship. Kikuko and Ryonami are Nabiki's henchwomen, her employees of the month. While Nabiki hatches the schemes, they are in the trenches getting their hands dirty, there to do all the menial grunt work. When Nabiki turns one of Ranma's schoolyard brawls into a sports entertainment venue, Kikuko and Ryonami are in charge of propaganda, collecting money, and placing bets. Should Nabiki take some scandalous photos of the pigtailed girl, Kikuko and Ryonami head the distribution department. While theirs are not the minds that conjure up these vile machinations, with an air of heartlessness they sit back and watch with a perverse glee as the poor rubes get taken, and like scavengers they reap a small portion of the benefits. Now I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, 
Perhaps these three do share a camaraderie what goes beyond business. Maybe they share a little of that same spark Yuka, Sayuri, Asami, and Hiroko do. But they sure as hell don't want us to know about it. For in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of business, it's survival of the fittest. So, Kikuko and Ryonami, you are most definitely... Gold Diggers! Hmm, speaking of which... Mm, nah, it's too easy. Ron Masao Tome and his father, Genma, are pioneers of anything goes martial arts. To be the best they can be, they must train nothing short of 100% of the time. To do this, one must sacrifice a great deal. One must deprive oneself of things most would classify as basic human needs, namely, the love of a mother. Genma has kept his son sequestered from his mom his entire life, for a mother's love would only serve as a distraction. To keep him from going soft, Genma has robbed his son of over a decade's worth of the love and nurturing only a mother can provide. The young Ranma Sao Tome, now in his mid-teens, has never gotten to know his mother, and it looked as if he never would. Finally, an unexpected knock on Nintendo's front door. Could it be? Yes, it could! After over a decade, she's finally here! It's Ranma's mom! What? Is this not who you were expecting? Nope, that's her all right. Can't you see the resemblance? N n I, all right, all right, all right. I know what you're thinking, all you smart Ranma fans out there. You're thinking Ranma's mom looks more like this, right? <laughs> well, I hate to break it to you, everything you've been taught is a lie. Yep. This is officially Ranma's mom. Yep. <laughs> I bet my life on it. <laughs> uh, you're not buying it, huh? Perhaps I should explain. This maiden of flowing violet locks is Sakura, named after the very cherry blossoms that flutter at her feet. And no, she is not Ranma's mother. She was actually a fling of Genma Saotome back during he and Sontendo's traveling days. And I've gotta say, Genma sure does score some good-looking chicks. What is his secret, do you think? Anyway, Genma has remained tight-lipped on any specifics, but we can assume it got real steamy between the two. According to Hapasai, she even bore his child. Ever the gigolo, Genma swept his memories of her under the proverbial rug and lived his life without ever looking back. That was until she re-emerged one fateful day, or so our heroes thought. Upon seeing her, Genma's reaction was one of anxiety, confusion, and tongue-tied stumbling over words, and based on this reaction, Ranma and Akane came to the assumption that this fair-voiced silhouette was Sakura, the very figure from Haposai's story, and Ranma's long-lost mother. What a couple of dumb shits. In reality, this lady doesn't give a hoot about Ranma or Genma. She's just looking out for number one. She happens to be the ringmaster at a local circus, and after seeing Genma's Jusenkyo curse in action, she immediately saw potential box office draw. Promising Genma all the bamboo he could eat, she was able to hire him no problem. But due to his inability to perform, don't worry, Genma, it happens to a lot of guys. She needed an additional attraction to warrant that bamboo expense, i.e. Ranma Saotome and his Jusenkyo curse. So all the while, a very emotional Ranma thought that he was being reunited with his estranged mother, but instead it was this rogue Sakura and Genma co-conspiring, each thinking only about themselves. Yes siree! Even though she had nothing to do with the whole Ranma's mother debacle, this devious lady ringmaster fits the description of a gold digger. You know, now would be the perfect time. Mm, no, 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 no. I, I, I just can't. It's just way too predictable. All right, what's next?